At this moment, now, you and I are returning to Allah. Rajun is happening now. For every moment, every, every uh, the lifespan, the movement of every atom, for it to move, for it to have continuation in life, it's like a movie. You know when you see a movie, if you slow the frames down very slow, you can, if you slow the movie down very slow, you can see frames. One frame, two frames, three frames, four frames. When you speed it up, you can't see the frames anymore. All you see is movement. Or like when you're a kid, and you draw the, the stick cartoons in the book, and you flip the pages very fast, you can't see the pages anymore. That's happening now in our life. Every moment is moved by your Every moment Allah says be, and it is. Every moment Allah is giving the power, giving the command. Every moment Allah is giving the, the, the order. Every moment Allah SWT is giving the permission. Every moment Allah SWT is causing and creating and sustaining and continuing. Every moment and every atom, every section of every place in this world, whether you say Allah or whether you say another God, whether you believe or whether you don't believe, whether you're blind or whether you can see, whether you're deaf or whether you cannot hear, every moment of every aspect of this creation, from this, from the sun all the way to the furthest uh, planet, and furthermore and further and furthermore, everything is being continually given existence al hayy al qayyum in this very moment that we're in. Every moment and every time and every uh, of every existence in that is saying Alhamdulillah. Because verily everything loves to exist. Everything loves the ability to exist. Everything praises the capacity to exist that Allah Ta'ala is the giver of life. In this capacity, Sayyidina Umar ibn Khattab he was a man who appreciated good his entire life. One of my esteemed teachers said to me, Abdul Latif, when Sayyidina Umar, I asked him about something. He said to me a wisdom, he said, Abdul Latif, when Sayyidina Umar was prostrating to idols, Allah loved him. When he was prostrating to idols, Allah loved him because he knew what he was going to become. This man set out from his house in Mecca al Muqarramah. He set out from his home, set out from his place to go and kill Rasulullah. In his mind, this man is causing a nuisance. In his mind, this man is causing a problem. I have to uh, eliminate this problem. I have to eliminate this, uh, this nuisance in my town. And with that good niyyah that he had, even though he was totally misguided, <laughs> he, set out, he set out to kill the Messenger of Allah. Allahumma salli wa sallam barak And on the way, when he went to kill the Messenger of Allah, Allahumma salli wa sallam barak he met with another of the Sahabi, of the Sahaba who saw him and realized his plot. And he said to him, Omar, you're going to go take care of this when this fitna is happening in your own home. Talking about his sister. He told him, another Sahabi, in order to save the Prophet ﷺ, he had to tell on another Muslim. <laughs> it's the work, less of two evils. So he went, said to Omar, went to take care of this situation. When he comes in, as you know, and you've heard very well, you were born Muslim, you know the story better than me. When he went, he heard the Quran being recited. And to make a long story short, or to make a beautiful story, unfortunately, shorter because of time. When he came there, and he, he slapped his sister, and blood ran down her face, and his morality, came, his morality struck him again. He couldn't believe what he had done. And he said, fine, let me know, let me see what you're reading. She said, no, you can't touch it, you have to purify yourself. But what am I saying, that when he went up and stood up, with that niyyah of good and went to make wudu and, and uh, made wudu and purified himself that Allah accepted his good, his, his niyyah, his intention and he went and started to read Qur'an when he read Qur'an, he was reading for Ali and it, it was Surah Taha and he came to the verse Waqima Salata Li Dikri Waqima Salata Li Dikri he read that verse that said and established the prayer for my remembrance the ulama they say that was the moment that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala opened the reality of God in his heart. Because Sayyidina Umar, he, he was a just individual, a just man. Don't think that someone who doesn't have Islam can't be just. Don't think that. They're not just in the most important ways, but they still are human beings. And Allah knows the heart. When he saw that, وَقِمَ الصَّلَاةَ لِذِكْرِ And established the prayer for my remembrance. In that moment, Sayyidina Umar, he realized he had a job. In that moment, Sayyidina Umar realized he had a responsibility. And in that moment, Sayyidina Umar was given the secret of all of creation and all of reality. And that's to say Allah. Don't say you. Don't say me. 
Don't say us. Don't say we. Say Allah. What came of salat? The dhikri. The true salat. The true standing. The true prayer lies in that dhikr. When an individual stands up and prays to worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, there's a story. I'll tell you a story. There was a business, four level business. Like a masjid here, maybe. So a guy was, he used to go and pray in the masjid all the time. One day he comes to the masjid and he prays in the jama'ah. After the, the imam said his tasneem, the man said, SubhanAllah. The imam said, What do you mean, SubhanAllah? He looked at everybody else. Did I make a mistake? They said, No, he didn't make any kind of mistake. The man said, No, well, I am for sure. The imam said, What's your proof? Not that he looked. What's your proof? He said, well, you see, I have a business and I have four levels of my business. Every dhuhr, I come and pray with you in this jama'ah and I do inventory of my business. In the first rakah, I do inventory of the first level. In the second rakah, I do inventory of the second level. And you see, today I have a level three. So the Imam said, oh, okay, I'm going to get up. Allah, <laughs> start to pray again. That's a lot that you and I pray when we stand before Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and we say Allah is Akbar. We say Allah is greater than everything. But yet inside the prayer we're thinking about everything that Allah is lying to lying. And the only one we're lying to is our own self is Allah knows. Allah is Akbar. Allah is greater. Mama'ana, what is the meaning of Allah is greater? Allah is greater. That's not, that is not a complete sentence. Allah is greater. Allah is greater than every shay. Allah is greater than everything. Allah is greater than my problems. Allah is greater than my stress. Allah is greater than my, my, my anxiety. Allah is greater than my problems. Allah is greater than my, my deficiencies. Allah is greater than my ideas. Allah is greater than anything that I can imagine in my mind. Allah is greater than the building I'm standing in, the art inside the building I'm standing in, the color inside the building I'm standing in, the brothers inside the building that I'm standing in. Wallahi Allah is greater than every shay. And when someone said Allah Akbar with that kind of quality, now they, are, they have entered into a place wherein the, the Father the Shabana, said that the only, there is nothing between them and Allah at that moment. Jazakallah, says the Imam Shafi'i, in his opinion, when you say, when you make movements, you say Allah Akbar. Again, when you make movements, Jazakallah khair. I happen to follow the Bible in school. May Allah bless Imam Shafi'i. Again and again. Allah is right. Allah Akbar. In every movement, in every rukun, in every turn, as in life, Allah Akbar. When a person is walking with Salat and Dikri and establishes the prayer for my remembrance. But the true thinker, the question comes to mind is, what is the true thinker? Is the true thinker to say Allah and then have everything in someone's mind? To say Allah and have, uh, and have something illicit, something illegal in one's heart? Is it to say Allah and you're thinking about how to make more money? Is it to say Allah and you're thinking about how to have more security? Is it to say Allah and you're thinking about how to uh, make my life better in any way I can possibly imagine? Or is it to say Allah to the point that there is no more after the How can I, the slave, put myself before the Lord and say Allah? How? How can I say Allah and all I'm thinking about is after the Rasulullah said that the Salah is Mi'raj al-Mu'min. It is the ascension of the believer. It is the ascension of the believer. We know that Rasulullah when he went to the highest levels of paradise, standing before Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, what do we think was on his mind? Do we think the Prophet was standing there in front of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala thinking about his mortgage, thinking about his, <laughs> his taxes, thinking about how, it, how in the world we're going to get back to Mecca? Wallahi, the only thing he's thinking about then, and the only thing he was thinking about before then, and the only thing in his heart now, and the only thing that has ever been in his heart. Subhanallah, asma bi abdi. Praise is he, praise is he who took his slave on a night journey. And that slave, Sayyidina Rasulullah, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he said Allah Akbar with his rights. And when he said Allah, the slave was no more. The slave has no claim. The slave has no choice. The slave has no desire. The slave has no want. The slave has no ambition. The slave has no, no craving. The slave has no nothing but Allah. The giver of every gift. 
Every day you and I get gifts from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Every day, Allah. You and I have been sitting here now for about 10 15 minutes. And you and I have been given the gift of life without even asking for it. Gift after gift after gift after gift. He's giving me, I can see you, I can hear you, I can touch you, I can walk with you, I can share memories with you, you can make me laugh, I can make you laugh. We enjoy each other's company, I can learn your language, and you can make fun of the way I speak. Every moment is a gift from Allah. Wallahi, if Allah was to give us a gift every single day, imagine this, in front of your home, you come to your home every day after, you know, Singapore course busy, you know? I didn't know it was just one big city. I thought it was like, a lot. it's a big city, it's very busy. You come to your home every day after a long day of, a long day of work, and you look inside and you see that there's a gift on the front door. The gift is wrapped in, in, in silver foil. It's so beautiful. It's so beautiful, you don't even want to unwrap the gift. But you have to because you want to know what's inside. When you open, you open the gift, you see something even better than the, than the wrapper, and you say, but well, there's one thing, you don't know where the gift came from. You don't know who, who sent the gift, what they caused you to be curious. What about the next day you come home? You're still thinking about the previous gift. You come home and you see another gift. That gift is bigger than the one that came before. Now the wrapper is gold. The contents inside made the contents of the previous day uh, a joke. You open the gift, you look inside and you realize, subhanAllah, once again, there is no return address. I don't know who gave this gift. Let's say it happens again and again and again. At some point, aren't you going to, is that going to drive you insane? You're going to ask people, did you see anyone come here and put this gift on the door? Did you see anyone come here and leave this? Did you see anyone come around the house? Did you see you, did you see the, uh, the, the, the postal service come through? No, we didn't see it. You'd be up at night time trying to think, was it my cousin Muhammad? <laughs> was it cousin Ahmed? Is it my Hindu neighbor? What in the world? But you and I receive those gifts every single day. And you and I, for the most part, are satisfied with the gift. And don't want to know about the sender of the gift. The gift is called Islam. That gift is called Islam. And it's in you, it's been given to you from birth. And it's in front of you every day. If you open up, if you, the process of opening up the gift, the process of removing the wrapper, the process of taking off the paper, is the, it's called Iman. You believe there's something else inside. When you open up the box and you look inside, and you see what is there, that's called Ihsan. Now you are experiencing the contents of the box. And the highest level of Ihsan will take you from that box to the one who sent the box, and may Allah make us those who search. May Allah make us look. May Allah make us want Him. May Allah make us want the gift sender. May Allah not make us complacent with the gifts. Because I am telling you, and may Allah give me a thing first, that there is nothing better than, than the sender of the gifts. al hayy al hayy Allah Azza wa Jalla mentioned on the tongue of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam in Hadith Qudsi. He said, Ana inda dhani abdibi. وَلَمَا أَعُوكِ إِذَا ذَكَلَنِي وَإِنْ ذَكَلَنِي فِي نَفْسِهِ ذَكَرْتُهُ فِي نَفْسِي وَإِنْ ذَكَلَنِي فِي مَلَئٍ ذَكَرْتُهُ فِي مَلَئٍ خَيْرٌ مِنْهُ وَانْتَخَرَّبَ إِلَيَّ هَذَا الشِّمْرٍ فَقَرْتُ إِلَيْهِ بِرَاعًا وَانْتَخَرَّبَ إِلَيَّ بِرَاعًا فَقَرْتُ إِلَيْهِ بَاعًا وَنَتَانِي يَمْشِي أَخِيْتُهُ حَرْبَلًا Pleasing salat, the kind of salat that we hate to leave, the kind of salat that we wish we had more for us to leave, to be able to stay longer and longer and longer. He said, I am to my slave as he thinks of me. I am to my slave as my slave considers me to be. And I am with him when he is remembering me. And establish the prayer for my remembrance. When an individual is, has established uh, the true salah, which is out, it, it's, its symbol is when we're standing in the masjid, standing in our home. But the true salah is when we're walking in the streets, when we're talking to our family, when we're buying clothes, 
when we're looking, when we're uh, any of the mundane acts of this world, one of the purposes of religion is that it takes the mundane, it takes the meaningless, and makes it have meaning. Wallahi, look at my body. I'm standing in front of you. My body is a one. What human being, what creature in the universe has a body that's a one? I'm an upright creature. Even my body testifies the truth. La ilaha illallah. Every most mundane and most meaningless aspect of life for the person who's failed, because, look at the meaning behind it. And I am with him when he remembers me. When the slave says, Allah, there is no separation between the name and the name. If you have a friend named Ahmed, if I say Ahmed, you see Ahmed. Where is he? He's right in your heart, he's in your head. When you say Allah, when you say Allah, that reality should cause you to be in the presence of Allah. There is no division between the name and the name. When you say Allah, everything should go. And the ma'iyya of Allah, the witness of Allah, the, the togetherness of Allah, is the, when the Allah takes the entire space of the heart of the slave. So there's nothing left. Now he can say Allah Akbar. Allah is greater than everything. وَعَلَى مَعَهُ إِذَا ذَكْرَنِي فَإِذَا ذَكْرَنِي فِي نَفْسِهِ فَإِذَا ذَكْرَنِي فِي نَفْسِهِ And so when and if he remembers me in himself, I remember him in myself. When we're standing in Salah and we're reading to ourselves, we have that deep reflection of what's happening inside. We are admitting our inabilities. We are admitting our lack of ability, our lack of capacity. When we feel Allah's presence in our heart, Allah Ta'ala has the same or incomparably uh, same kind of virtue with us. That He remembers us in a very personal and a very intimate way. Meaning that if I don't want Allah to remember me that way, then don't be that way with Allah. If you want Allah to forget about you, then forget Him. They forgot Allah. So Allah taught them to forget themselves. May Allah save us. And if he remembers me in a gathering like this, and if he remembers me in a gathering like this, I remember him in a better gathering amongst the angels. May Allah accept us. When the Quran is in the air, it becomes to me by the width of a hand, I come to him by the length of an arm. In other words, all you have to do is just show up. When the Fajr is alive, when you hear the Adhan being called, all you have to do is pull yourself up, make wudu, stand before Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, and he's already come to you, closer than you come to him. I am closer to him. We are closer to him than his regular vein. Doesn't Allah say that? We are closer to him than his, than his regular vein. The regular vein is that vein that is the lifeline. That means Allah is closer to me than my own blood. May Allah give us that taste. When the karabah ilayhi, the shabrin, the karabah to ilayhi, liraan, when the karabah ilayhi, liraan, the karabah to ilayhi, ba'an. If he comes to me, the, by this name, I come to him, the very interesting uh, image. I come to him uh, by an arm's breadth. In other words, by way of symbol, by way of indication. If uh, we keep coming close, Allah comes to us with open arms. When you have a weakness, a problem, a difficulty, someone in your family dies, you have some kind of disease, well, Allah is the best moment of your life. Because in that moment, and at that time, you are completely sure, and so he is in your heart, and you're able to say, Allah, the way of slaves is Allah. Rasulullah was the most high of the Anbiya. He has the most difficulty. Why? Because he's the closest. May Allah make us close without giving us trials. Say, Ameen. Allah says in another hadith, Qasamtu salat abayni wa abayna abdi nisfayt. I have divided the prayer between myself and my slave in two. No state. When you and I are in salah, the prayer is divided in two. 
and for the prayer of what he asked. فَإِذَا قَالَ أَمْتُ الْحَمْدُ لِلَّهِ رَبِّ الْعَالَمِينَ قَالَ اللَّهُ تَعَالَى الْحَمَدِنِي أَحْدِي When we say أَمْتُ لِلَّهِ رَبِّ الْعَالَمِينَ Allah answers us in the prayer. And Allah says, my slave has praised me. Can you imagine we're standing before Allah? And we say, Allah, what? Alhamdulillah. There's a conversation happening. There's nothing worse when you're talking to someone and they're on a cell phone and they're looking at you in the face and they're talking to somebody else. You just want to leave. <laughs> like, man, let me know when you're done. When we stand before Allah, we say, Alhamdulillah, is Alhamdulillah, Abdi. And for my slave, my slave has praised me, and for my slave, is that what she has? وَإِذَا قَالَ الرَّحْمَنِ الرَّحِيمِ قَالَ تَعَالَى أَثْنَى عَلَيَّ عَبْدِي And when we say الرَّحْمَنِ الرَّحِيمُ Allah has just back and He says that my slave has again praised me or extolled me. وَإِذَا قَالَ مَلِكِ يَوْمِكِينَ قَالَ فَجَدَنِي عَبْدِي My slave has uh, given me majesty. He has given me a certain majesty. He has uh, Given me this kingship, this magic. After that, the Ibn Qala, Iyaka the Abu Dhabi, Iyaka the Sahi, Qala Hada, Baini, Wabayna Abdi, Wali Abdi Masa'ad. When we say, uh, when we submit, when we say to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that to you alone we worship, Iyaka the Abu Dhabi, Iyaka the Sahi, Allah answers back to us. And this is every time we pray Salah. Every time we stand before Him, not whenever He feels like it. Or not whenever we feel like it, it's there. Every time, the hadra, the presence of Allah. Every time we pray, He says, Hada baini wa baina abdi. This, this, this here, this, this act, this moment, this time, this space, this proximity, this now, this, this very, an actual second. This is between me and my slave. The same Allah that is running the entire universe is looking directly at you, listening to you. He has heard you. He has accepted the words that He gave you to say to Him. He even told you what to say. Ar Rahman Rahim. Maliki Yom Din. Iyaka Abudu wa Iyaka Nasta'in. Allah has given us the key for His attention. Hada Baini. Hada Baini is between me, between Abdi, and my slave. And he will have whatever he asks for. إِهْدِنَا الصِّرَاطُ الْمُسْتَقِيمُ صِرَاطُ الَّذِينَ لَعَنَتْنَا عَلَيْهِمْ غَيْرَ الْمَرْتُوبِ عَلَيْهِمْ وَالْضَّالِينَ What we ask for at that moment and what Allah has asked us to give is, the, is Hidayah, is guidance. May Allah take us by the hand. May Allah pick us up. May Allah encourage us. May Allah cause us to love His name. May Allah call us to love Him. May Allah call us to fall in love with Him. May Allah cause love to engulf our hearts. May Allah cause love to engulf our brains. May Allah cause love to, to cover our fingers. May Allah cause love to take over our heads. May Allah cause love to take over our every atom, every atom of our body like a magnet. A magnet that cannot resist standing in the presence of Allah, being with Allah, saying Allah's name. Wallahi, when you love something, you say His name. When you love something, you say its name. Why does Allah have 99 names? Because He knows His value, God. And He loves Himself. He gave His Rasul, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, how many names? Wallahi, when a young man is about to get married, the only thing he can talk about is the name of his, of his bride. <laughs> oh, so and so, oh, oh. Next thing he now is a poet. Now he's a poet. May Allah make our hearts sing. Okay. So